Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to this video. Now, uh, we're back with career mode goodness, but before I go on, I just want to hit you guys with a cheeky little disclaimer to let you guys know that if I sound at all echoey, that is entirely my fault. Um, I just moved into a new flat with uh, Harry or Roadstra and Calix, and my room is just full of boxes right now, but I thought, you know what, I gotta get this video out for you guys. So I put my setup together and I thought I'd throw together episode one of this brand new series called The Italian Job, which I'm going up head to head again. MGH. Now, some of you guys may be aware of this series. It's been done by, um, I think, uh, Toby and Nep have done it. Um, Finch and Wayback are doing it as well, something along those lines. So there's a few people that are already doing it, but I love the idea. I think it's awesome, and you guys know any of you old school fans will be well aware of my uh, past career modes, and I'm sure there might be a few new MGH fans. So hello to you guys if you were watching this. I hope you guys enjoy and stay for the series. But this is the Italian job, and essentially what it is is uh, two people or however many people involved in the series take one team and they try to make the highest rank on the league by the end of it to finish in the highest place possible. Now, in order to keep it absolutely dead square and not bring in FIFA ability, what we're doing is simulating all of our games. So we're just going to hit sim and the computer is going to do the business. Now, of course, there'll be an element of luck to it all. You know, how nice is the computer actually going to be to us? I'm not entirely sure. That's something that we're going to have to find out. But also, it's going to come down to who really is a tactical genius, who is slightly better than the other one at making those transfers, making those signings uh, and all that sort of good stuff. So hopefully it's going to be really exciting. I'm going to leave MGH's uh, link down below and uh, you guys obviously can check out his first episode and watch it all. He's going to be doing Napoli of course. I'm going to be doing Napoli and it should be a really exciting series. So I want to see a lot of support from you guys. If you guys will be kind enough to drop a like that would be amazing and uh, yeah let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about the Napoli team. So as you can tell, whenever I first um, get hold of a team, when I get my hands around their neck, I want to take a look at the team. Let's take a look at the team management and uh, what's going on with that. So what I notice straight off the bat is that Napoli needs quite a bit of work done to it. You know, um, it, a little bit in the striker department. I guess you already have Higuain and uh, Pandev. Pandev and Higuain work pretty well together, but I was definitely interested in picking up just one more striker, especially for the fact that I needed some depth. You do have Zapata, I believe is how you pronounce that, but. Uh, yeah, I wasn't too keen on him and as you guys can see here I decided to get my Jose Mourinho on right here and drop some tactical genius on FIFA now Admittedly, there's really not that uh, much customization you can, you can do in FIFA 14 and in FIFA 15 The new team management looks so much better. You have so much more customization and control over how your team plays So I'm excited for that thought I'd sort out You know the player roles just some real basic stuff when you first get your hands on a team and as you can see Mertens actually has some nasty nasty stats so he's taking a bunch of stuff going on and uh, Inler as well has got some uh, really good power on his free kicks so I, so I decided to stick him on the uh, long free kicks. Anyways, let's take a look, uh, quick look at the uh, squad uh, report here. Just take a look at how much my players are really worth. Um, I, for me, Higuain is probably the most valuable. I think he was valued at something around 21 million euros. That's a lot of money for a club like Napoli. Although, with that being said, um, Napoli starts off with a, with a pretty tasty budget as well. So, I'm definitely not uh, complaining about 30 million euros in the bank. And uh, here we are, just taking a look around things. Uh, Hamsic as well, worth a plenty of money too, 15.5. You know, there's so many players in here here that are really worth some good money and this team is going to be so much fun to do it with um, I'm excited for you guys to uh, watch and enjoy this spectacle as you can see we've got a remaining wage budget of around 210,000 which is not too bad actually um, one thing that I'm hoping doesn't happen is I end up spending stupid amount of money on wages because I sometimes get caught up in that but anyway straight into the transfer network because that's the one thing you want to do I located the weaknesses on my team or at least I think I have and so I go straight in there and I just side I want to add to the striker I want to add to the firepower up front like I said we have Higuain and Pandev I like to run a 4-1-2-1-2 the default for this team is a 4-2-3-1 I believe but it's the 4-2-3-1 narrow where you've got three uh, midfielders so Oh, sorry, uh, five midfielders. My apologies. You've got two CDMs and then uh, three attacking mids and center mids and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. And as you can see, they want us to reach the semi uh, the semi final of the domestic cup. Sorry. And they want us to do well in the league. That's for sure. I think they said they wanted us to win the league. So, that's uh, pretty ambitious, but I'm here to do the job. But at the end of the day, the only thing we're really taking into account uh, when it comes to this race against MGH, I suppose. By the way, there's no, I don't want to see any hate 
comments or anything like that to either one of us. It's it's a good fun time, and if you guys are willing to help me out and uh, give me some pointers, that's awesome. If you guys want to do the same for MGH, that would be awesome too. I don't want you guys to think that this is some sort of super competitive thing, but don't get me wrong, I am certainly looking to come out on top. So I, I guess I'm a bit of a hypocrite, whatever. Um, uh, yeah, so. Like I was saying, um, actually, I don't really know. What was I saying? Um, we'll just we'll just talk about uh, some of the transfers here and some of the players that I want to keep in mind. Oh, yeah, we're talking about a striker. Sorry, I want to add to the firepower. I want some players up there. Another huge weakness, and uh, I'm about to throw out an instruction for that. I need to get my scouts on it ASAP, and uh, that is my defense. The defense of Napoli, for me, is just just so so bad i just don't like it um there's probably one or two players that i'd be lucky to keep but otherwise i want to you know make transfers as soon as possible with that um so pretty much the striker and the defense that's what i want to change i actually really like the midfield that napoli have you got hamstead you got insigne you got jose callahan and you got uh inler uh Dim Dis Dimazeli, I, I think I always pronounce that one. It's the guy on your screen right now getting plenty of offers from plenty of clubs. Obviously, people want to get his hand, their hands on him. Um, obviously, we've got Christian Maggio. Uh, Maggio looks okay, but like I said, he is age 31, and he's only a 77 overall, which pretty much means he's never going to grow past that 30, 77 overall. Um, you know, if anything, he's just going to take a step into a wheelchair, and that'll be that, according to FIFA anyways, because uh, for some reason, uh, as soon as they go over their 30s, the decline just, just it hits. It's hard and it is not a pretty sight at all. Anyways, we get some bids for the young Inler. Actually, he's not really that young. He's 29, but uh, that's sort of your you know, your prime age when you're doing damage around 29 for a CDM. And so, you know, he's definitely in, well, for what I think is a uh, sort of his prime age. And he's obviously got a pretty decent rating there. For me, he's probably my best defensive midfield choice. Um, You can pick uh, pair him up with uh, uh, Di Mazzelli. You can also pair him up with Jorginho as well. And there's one other defensive midfield that's just slipping my mind right now but i'll be able to tell you guys again at um the team selection and that's one thing i actually really noticed with this team when it comes down to um when it comes down to depth in the defensive midfield position there is so much depth that we literally have like five or six defensive midfielders so i'm not too worried about that but um brisha munching glad back or however that that's pronounced um are actually going after him pretty hard and decided to counter offer for just short of six million because to be honest with you inler he's great but for six million i definitely think it's probably worth it uh you know he's he's good but i think i can probably get better for my money if um you know i was to get six million for him so anyways again like i said the defense needs a complete overhaul and that's exactly what i was on the prowl for i wanted to throw out um a center back instruction uh strong and tall that's kind of the usual sort of center back uh attributes and if they don't have that i'm usually a little bit worried um but uh, yeah again another offer comes in and this is for your man pandev now pandev to me like i said because i don't have um, a whole lot of um, striker options right now and that's one of the things you don't really want to sell players before you bring players in that's kind of been my sort of way of, go of going about things I mean people do everything differently right but I'm just saying for me I I personally prefer to bring players in and then if I have too many I can offload them if that makes sense um, so yeah Anyways, uh, the scout got back and he come back with two amazing, absolutely amazing players. And that is Adrian Ramos there and Juf. Now, both of them, I really like them as strikers. So I threw bids around for them. I think still six million is actually really good for players like that, you know. Um, I, as you guys may have seen in the instruction, I tried to keep their contract uh, between zero and three years. The main reason for that is that you often get them a little bit cheaper when things like that happen. I believe Juf has yet to actually uh, sort out his contract with his club I think he's in the last 12 months of it so in that sort of situation you can actually get a player on a relative relatively cheap deal compared to what they're actually worth so with that being said um, as you can see I'm getting all my scout reports back um, one from Belgium as well and these are the Belgians that they came back obviously the center backs I was interested now Cayute right there this guy man this guy is a monster I I wasn't um, too sure about some of the other ones if you guys are aware of any of those other center backs and what you if you think they'd be any good then do let me know in the comments 
comments. But uh, yeah, the one that stuck out to me was Cayute, and mainly because I played with him before, and he was uh, so, so good for me. Uh, admittedly, you know, he is still quite young, and he's going to be worth a fair, fair whack. But uh, yeah, he's definitely one of those players that I want to keep my eye on. Now, next up, this player, Diakite, for me, is the one that I just wanted. He is the center back I would love to have in the team. Benucci as well, another good option as well. As you can see, these are all Italian clubs. Um... But yeah, I would love to have Diakite in the squad. Unfortunately, though, Diakite has just moved to Fiorentina on this uh, particular career mode, which is really disappointing. I was so, so gutted when I saw that, you know. Um, but anyways, Norwich, um, you know, they're chasing after my man Pandev, but they said it was just too much. They weren't willing to pay it. And I understand that because, let's be honest, I put a pretty ridiculous counter offer. I'm not looking to get rid of him unless it's for really good money. Do you know what I mean? And... Yeah, I'm just not willing to get rid of him, at least until I bring someone else in. And uh, I'd be willing to get rid of him for probably close to the 10 million euro marker because I know I can bring in some absolute gems in for that sort of money. And while Pandev is good, I think there are definitely better out there. Um, so I'd love to hear what you guys have to thought. Who are your favorite strikers for around 10 million euros? Please let me know down below. And if you're wondering how many pounds that is, maybe playing pounds sterling, it's probably around the 6 million to 7 million pounds. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys all and thoroughly enjoyed this video because uh, this series is going to be a lot of fun and uh, just as a heads up as well guys I want you guys to remember this that um, a lot of the rest of the series will actually feature live commentary uh, post commentary thing is probably just for the first episode so I can explain it all to you real nice and easy but uh, yeah for the most part it's all going to be done live and I'll just chop it up and you guys can enjoy that so uh, yeah that is that guys I hope you did all enjoy this video and like I said please show your support by dropping a like and I'll see you guys later bye bye